Today I thought I'd walk you through exactly how I write my blog post. I get tons of questions about this and I want to give you all the juicy details. So writing blog posts is really the core of what you do as a blogger. And I've got over 130 blog posts on my blog and I've been blogging for almost 10 years. So there are many things I wish I knew when I started. So today I'm giving away all I know from beginning to end when I write a blog post. Inside your blog post, you can teach people, inspire them with your ideas or sell something, a product or a service. And you can apply my process of writing blog posts to different types of content. I'm doing the same thing when I'm planning a YouTube video, or maybe you want to create a podcast. It works for both. I have to make it easy for you. And so that I don't lose my head in the details, Details, I've structured this video into three parts. What you should do before you start writing, how to write a blog post, and what you should do before and after you hit publish. So let's do this. So before you jump in and start writing your blog post, there are a couple of things you can do to create the best content, use your time efficiently and create content with a purpose. So for step one, before you start writing a post, you need to decide what type of content you're going to create. If you want to use your blog for business or to grow on social media, then you're not writing for yourself. You're writing for your audience. And there are a couple of types of content that in my opinion work the best to do that. So my favorite types of posts to connect with your audience are how to post, list posts and reviews. So first, why how to posts? How to posts are usually in-depth tutorials where you're being specific about a problem your audience has and you're trying to solve that problem for them. It can be um, a walkthrough of a tool or a story of how you overcame a roadblock or something. Now the purpose of a how to post is to educate your audience. We always want a reason why we're writing a blog post. Otherwise you're just creating random things and believe me that's a waste of your time. It's okay to spend a bit more time before you start writing if that that means you're creating content with a purpose. Okay, second, we have list posts. Usually people love list posts because they are more actionable. So for example, the 10 things you need to do X, Y, Z, or your seven favorite things for spring, or the five must do step to whatever. Like lists help break down the complexity of a topic and it feels like the things has the thing has just become more doable. You can do basically anything in like five steps, right? List posts also don't always have to be so in-depth as how-to posts. So something like the 10 must-have spring outfits of 2022 can be put together much more quickly than a super long 4,000 word blog tutorial, right? Now the purpose of a list post is to inspire or educate your audience. And third, I love to write reviews. Reviews can be, for example, product reviews, trend reviews, or sharing a personal experience. Maybe you've done a challenge and you're taking your audience with you. So for example, the good and the bad, what worked and what didn't work, or the pros and the cons, stuff like that. Reviews are also great for affiliate marketing. So if you're using a specific tool in your business that has helped you make a transformation, you can show your audience exactly how the product helped you go from point A to B and point B is that result they really want. Sharing affiliate products like this is so effective and in my opinion, one of the best ways to start earning money from your blog. So the purpose of your review post is to promote a product or service to your audience. Okay, once I know what type of blog post I'm going to write. The second thing I do before I start writing is creating an outline. Yes, I do this every time. I'm not usually a type A kind of person at all. I'm more like the creative type and while I'm writing, I get a million more ideas of what I could say. I get lost so quickly. So writing an outline is seriously a must and this doesn't have to be rocket science. So here's what you can do. To start, write down everything that comes to your mind in a couple of bullets. Just free your mind and bring everything to paper. Then dive in deeper. Ask yourself, did you cover everything? Do you need to do additional research into something? Or think about if you need to leave something out. When you're an expert, you can say so many things and go on forever, but this could make it difficult for a beginner to understand. So think about that too. And then finally, you want to reorganize and structure. A great structure for how to post is, for example, first start with the what, then continue with the why. This is important and then you can do the actual how to do this 
thing in a full tutorial. Okay, so we've made it through our preparation. Let's move on to step two, how to actually write a blog post. So when it comes to writing your content, there are three things involved. Writing your blog post, editing your post and adding add-ons. So things that are supporting elements like images and videos and stuff like that. Are you ready to start writing? Now, when you've done your outline and research, this will be a piece of cake. You just need to bring your thoughts to paper. Now, I write all my blog posts in a Google Doc. I'm not the biggest fan of the Gutenberg WordPress editor, so I write everything down in a Google Doc. This way, it's also safe if something ever goes wrong. I got a folder for each blog post. I have a doc for my outline and my content. And if I'm also doing a video, I can add that there too. So everything is organized in one place. Now, when I write, I use a tool called Grammarly to check my spelling. I'm a native German speaker, so English is my second language. So naturally, I'm going to make mistakes. And I mean, I make many, many mistakes. But you know what? We're not aiming for perfection here. Grammarly will help you get rid of 95% of the mistakes. There will always be the person pointing out that one typo, but you know what? It's okay. I'm always assuming they mean well. So the final thing here is that I read everything out loud. Out. Maybe you've heard people talk about finding your voice and I always thought a bit that it sounds kind of woo-woo. What does it even mean? But the way I make sure the post sounds like me is to read it out loud. I do this every single time and believe me, this will make all the difference. Every blog post should sound like you're talking to your best friend. Reading your post out loud takes five minutes, but you'll find those little spots where it doesn't sound natural. Okay, when you're done with writing, text editing is next. Here are a couple of tips I want to give you that I found to help people read through my posts more easily so they stay longer on my site. So here we go. Always make sure to use subtitles. In WordPress, they're called headlines. H1 is your headline one, your main title. You should only use H1 headlines, one per blog post. Then use H2 to organize your posts. And if you've created your outline, this is already done. Then you can use H3 headlines if you want to structure it even further. Literally, no one wants to read a 4,000 word blog post in one stream of text. It's way too overwhelming. Okay, now for paragraphs. I tend to do short paragraphs, usually one to two sentences. You want to pull the reader through your content. And I'm guilty of skimming um, other people's stuff too, but using strategic paragraphs helps people skim and actually read more of your content. And third in editing, I always use different font styles to highlight certain things or draw attention to something. You can use bold text or highlight important points you don't want people to miss when they skim. And then you can use um, the italic text function when you're commenting on something or giving a behind the scenes or you want to add a fun little text fragment. All these editing techniques help people to get through to the end of your post. And finally, I do one more step before I move on to promotion. And that is, I include add-ons and any supporting elements. So here I'm talking images, videos, and links. So for blog post images, there are three things. Your photos, your graphics, and your featured image, aka your thumbnail. Okay, so first I want you to add your photos. So this is either photos you took and edited yourself. So if you're a food or home decor style blogger or something, um, this will be a big thing. Or you can also add stock images that help support your content. Stock images are taken by professional photographers, but they've waived their rights to their copyright. So you can use them on your blog. Then second, add any additional graphics. Graphics can be, for example, infographics, stats, or your Pinterest image, or images for like a step-to-step -step guide. So people know, for example, where to click and what to do. Now I use Canva Pro to create all my graphics. There's also a free Canva version you can test out yourself. I use it every single day, it's the best. And finally, you'll need to add your featured image, AKA your thumbnail. So usually on your website, you have your blog post page and there's the feed of all the blog posts you've written. And then next to the blog post title, you've got that featured image, AKA your thumbnail. Again, I use Canva Pro to create my thumbnails and everything. 
And that's it for blog post images. So second, as another add-on, you can add a relevant video to your post if you have one. This is only if you have a YouTube channel or if you want to add someone else's video to your post. Videos can be great to break through your text and sometimes people prefer to watch videos. You can upload your video to your media library and then add it to your content, but I always recommend you start a YouTube, cha YouTube channel and hear me out first. You can add your video as a private video to your channel and then you only need to add the URL you get from YouTube to that post and it will show up as a video as well. Um, it's the same thing, but this way the video is hosted on YouTube and not on your blog. And this is important because videos are huge files that take up a long time to load. So if you add a video straight to your blog post, it will take time to load and people might not wait until it's fully loaded, but jump right off. And you don't want that. Um, and you don't have that issue if you host a video on YouTube. So you're welcome for that tip. Okay, and finally, for our final add-on, you'll need to add your links. First, add your other website links. So maybe you've referenced something like a quote or a stat from another site. So make sure you're also crediting those other creators with that link to that resource. Second, add your related post links. So maybe you've written a blog post that would help um, to read after this post. So you can um, deep dive into that topic some more. So you can add your own um, related posts either um, at the, straight after when you mention that, or you can also add it um, in a list as related posts at the end of your blog posts. And finally, add your affiliate links. Like I mentioned before, affiliate links are, great, are a great way to earn your first income from your blog. So when you mention products and services, you want to make sure to add your affiliate links so that if a person ends up buying that product, you get tracked and paid for that commission. Okay, that was a lot already and you're doing amazing. Now this is where most people stop. They press publish and they walk away. But you and I are gonna go the extra mile today. Now this is where people go wrong big time. We've got a couple more things to do before we publish our post and they're absolutely crucial for successful blogging. So if you need to caffeinate before we move on, grab that coffee or diet code Coke or whatever's your jam and come back. These are the things that are the difference between a hobby blogger and a six-figure blogger. So if you're ready, let's talk about what you need to do right before and after you hit publish on your blog post. Now we've talked a lot about creating content with a purpose, right? So educating your audience or inspiring them, but also promoting a product. But another big purpose of your content is to attract people to your blog. So they ultimately subscribe to your community and subscribing to your blog by that, I mean joining your email list. Your email list contains all your blog subscribers, including their email address in one tool. They need to give you their name and email address so you can start sending them emails. And your email list is the number one most important asset in your business. No one can take away your email list. Your email list belongs to you. It doesn't belong to Instagram. It doesn't belong to Facebook. It doesn't belong to Pinterest. And here's the most important thing about this. Your email list is how you will make most of your money as a blogger. And I know this is a shocker to many beginners, but it's 100% true. It's true for me and I know it's true for many of my blogger friends. Email is still the number one way of how to sell products and services to your followers. So before you hit publish, you want to add that opt-in form. An opt-in form is something that looks like this and people can type in their name to subscribe. They are then added to your list and you can start sending them emails. And like I said, this is a separate tool than WordPress and here I always recommend ConvertKit. ConvertKit is my favorite email marketing service and you can start a free account with them for up to a thousand subscribers. It has all the functions you need like automations to send out welcome emails and all that stuff. So make sure you add your opt-in form to your new blog post before you publish. Now second, and I'm probably going to bust another bubble here, but just because you publish a new blog post, 
doesn't mean people will show up and read it. If you don't promote the heck out of your post, no one will show up. And I'm not saying this to be mean, you could have the best post in the world. If you're not going to promote it on social media and on Google, no one will even know it exists. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you know that Pinterest is my favorite way of growing traffic. So here's what I want you to do. Before you publish your post, I'd love you to create a pin image you can share on Pinterest. You can embed that pin in the post like a regular image. And when your post is live, you can use the Pinterest Chrome extension or Tailwind to post it to Pinterest. Once that pin is live on Pinterest, people can search a topic and find your pin, which leads them back to your blog and that's how they find you. If you need help designing your Pinterest pins, check out my very own Pinterest pin templates. It's a pack that includes 57 different templates. I've designed them myself so that you can get the most clicks over to your site. So check them out by clicking here. And then finally, our very last step in creating our absolutely killer blog post is to do SEO. Now, please don't jump off. There are just a couple of things you can do to start without going all out Google craziness. Um, so I'd love for you to install a free plugin on your blog called the Yoast SEO plugin. It's free forever and will help your post show up on Google. When you've installed that plugin and you go to the back end of your blog post, so um, now you have this additional section at the end and here's where you can add a keyword and a snippet. So first I want you to define a keyword. Each of your blog posts should have a keyword and a keyword can be any word but it can also be a short sentence. A keyword is anything you type into a search engine like Google to find something. So when it comes to your blog post, use a keyword you think people would type into Google when they're looking for a post just like yours. This is usually part of your blog post type. So anything with a how to do X, Y, Z or ideas for yada, 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 um, something like that. And then after you've defined your keyword, I want you to also add your snippet. Now, if you go onto Google and look at the list of blog posts that show up, you can see that below the title, there's this little extract. It's just one to two sentences, what the post is about. Adding a snippet is so important for SEO. So make sure you'll fill out um, and include your keyword. keyword. It will help you rank and get even more people to your blog from Google. And that's a wrap. This is exactly how I write my super high quality blog posts people love, but also help me convert people to subscribers and how they buy my products. I know it was a lot, but you can come back to this video and watch certain parts again and again. And just as a disclaimer here, it's normal that this process takes time. Doing all these steps takes me a long time too. So don't listen to people telling you how they write their amazing blog posts in just one hour. It's BS or they're just creating really poor quality. I'm now giving you permission to create less if that means better quality. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what you think. And if if there's something you'd like to know more about when it comes to blogging or Pinterest. Now that's it from me for today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell below so you don't miss any of my videos. I try to post a video about Pinterest and blogging every Tuesday and you subscribing really helps me keep my little one woman business going. I love you so much and talk to you soon. Cheese!